Welcome to Netlytics tutorial on text analysis features part 2. In this segment we will walk through how to create and edit categories and how to create a visualization in the form of a tree map to help you understand the feel of conversations happening within your data set. As we mentioned in our previous tutorial, Netlytics text analysis features assist in the discovery and exploration of the content within data sets and helps researchers to understand the issues and topics important to online communities. Last time we looked at analyzing topics by using the keyword extractor box. For a refresher on these features, please see the link below. This tutorial will focus on the second box under the text analysis tab called manual categories. Categories provide a way to perform a semi-automated classification of messages. Where the keyword analysis focused on all of the words making up each message, the categories analysis is more concerned with each message as a whole. If this is your first time using this feature, Netlytic will automatically apply a set of demo categories to each message in order to categorize them into broader groups, such as messages that contain positive or negative feelings. As a researcher, you have the option of using these demo categories in Netlytic, or you can create your own as the demo categories may not meet your specific research needs. Netlytic gives you the option to edit and create categories of words and phrases to represent broader or narrow concepts. Let's walk through an example of how to create and edit categories. We will be using an Instagram data set using a location for our example. This data set was set to collect posts within a 15 km radius of the Young Dundas Square in Toronto, Ontario, which is like Times Square in the US. To begin, click the orange Create Edit Categories button. The next screen will display all of the demo categories automatically used by Netlytic. Within each category, there are a number of associated words. In this window, you can either disable or create new categories or new words and phrases under a category. To disable either, simply click the red X button located at the top of each word. It will then be crossed out and not used during analysis. You always have the option to re-enable its use by clicking on the hyperlink that says Enable. For instance, let's go to the Quantity category and take a look at all of the words included. You can either scroll down the page or click on the hyperlink that says Quantity. This category includes terms that are relevant to the quantity of something, such as many or few. To remove the word many, for example, click on the red box next to the word. Again, to reintegrate this word back into the analysis, simply click on the hyperlink that says enable. To create a new category, scroll to the top of the screen, or you can click on the gray arrow button pointing up. Type in the category's title and click add new category. This will now appear alphabetically listed under the categories heading at the top of the screen. For example, let's create a category called location. You also have the ability to add new terms to each category. Let's use the category we just created. You can either click on the hyperlink or scroll down to the location category section, which at this point will not have any terms associated with it. Once you're here, type the new term you'd like to add into the text box and click add term. For instance, let's add in young. Although young may describe age, in this case the data set is most likely to use young as a location marker, since our query is pulling from posts from around the Young Street area in Toronto. You may find it helpful to create your categories prior to analysis, but you are free to make text category changes at any point. Please note that for changes to take effect, you will need to close the Edit Categories window, click the Reset button, and then reanalyze your dataset. A second way to add categories is through the Text Analysis tab when you're in the Word Cloud visualization. Within the Word Cloud, click on a word you'd like to explore further. For instance, let's take a look at 416, which is the area code for the Greater Toronto Area. In this window, we can take a look at how Netlytic has classified the word, and at this point you can decide to change that category, or after reviewing its content within the dataset, you can create a new category. To do this, in the top left-hand corner, we see the word selected, and underneath a button that says Classify As. Click this. In the next pop-up screen, a box will be checked with the category Netlytic has automatically assigned to it. Here we will reclassify this word as being part of the location category. 
Now let's take a look at a second topic to illustrate how we would add a category through the word cloud. I've chosen the word Toronto Photography. In the next screen, I will select Classify As, and rather than checking one of the categories, I will enter the title of my new category, let's say Art, and press Add Category. Now that you have established categories for an analytic to sort content into, we will create a visualization in the form of a tree map, which shows distribution of messages among each category. Before we can visualize these categories, we need to analyze the data. Click the green analysis button, which also indicates the number of posts requiring analysis. Unlike the keyword extractor, to complete the analysis, please keep your browser open and do not change the page until the progress bar reaches 100%. Depending on how many posts need to be analyzed, processing can take anywhere from just a few seconds to a few minutes. Once the process is finished, you will see a message stating there are no new messages to process. Netlytic automatically identifies and counts which records in your dataset belong to each category. If after the analysis is complete, you still see that there are some remaining posts that have not been analyzed, this suggests that these posts simply could not be classified into any of the existing categories. However, please note that if you are working with a live data set, the number of remaining posts may also suggest that there are new messages that have been recently collected and still need to be analyzed. The visualization will take the form of an interactive tree map which correlates size to frequency. So the larger the square and associated category, the more frequently it occurs in the data set. The great thing about Netlytic is that through this visualization, you are able to see a larger picture of the conversation while still being able to see the specific details of each message and each message that contributes to these categories. For instance, in our tree map, which is visualizing the Instagram conversation happening around Dundas Square in Toronto, we first see the top level categories. Here, the good feelings category is the largest. We will also notice that the two categories we created earlier now appear in the tree map. If we click on any of the categories, the next screen will show us the distribution of records that mentions terms associated with that category. This provides a second level where we can explore which terms are more prevalent in the category. For instance, the feelings category, the second level shows us that the term love is prevalent, as well as great and nice. This brief glimpse of the text analysis demonstrates a very positive and happy discussion. The interactive tree map visualization shows three levels, categories and terms which we've just discussed, and the final level are the individual messages. By clicking on a term, you can view all of the messages that mention it. For instance, let's select the category Feelings Good and then choose the term Nice to explore further. The next window will show all of the messages that contribute to this category and the term Nice will appear in red. By clicking on each instance, you can view the date when the message was sent, from whom, as well as its content. To exit this screen, click close along the bottom right. Before we end, here are a few additional things to keep in mind when working with the category's features. A dataset can be either live or static. A live dataset is where Netlytic is still collecting data from the import source and is indicated by the status wheel which appears on your dataset home screen. A static data set is where Netlytic is no longer importing from the data source. This could be either because the collection period has ended or it was a one-time import source, such as a text file. If you decide to work with a data set while it is still live, you will need to analyze any new and incoming messages from the Analysis tab. If you would like to remove the results of the analysis for any reason, you can select the Reset button in the Manual Categories box. This does not mean you are deleting the data collected, you are only erasing any analysis done up until this point. This will not affect any changes or additions made to categories. It will only undo Netlytic's counts of the records in each assigned category. Netlytic automatically identifies the longest field, usually the description or the title, for text analysis. 
If your data set includes another field of text other than the default, you can use the additional processing options to select an alternative field for analysis from the drop-down menu. Depending on the topic of your research, you may have a large data set. If you have more than 10,000 records, an additional menu will appear on your text analysis screen. Within this menu, you can split your data set to make processing faster. You also have the option to use the Beta Cabana dashboard. For more information on this feature, please visit Netlytics YouTube channel. To split the data set, click the scissor icon. The pop-up screen will ask you to create a subset based on a date filter. Click on the calendar icon to select the date range for the from and before fields. Click Select. A message will appear indicating your subset has been created and you can then close the window. Netlytic will return to your dataset home screen and here you will notice that under the initial dataset a second appears with the same title but includes a date range. This is also a useful tool if you are interested in analyzing the content from a particular day or a number of days separated from the whole collection period. Thanks for watching. For more information on how to use Netlytic, please visit our YouTube channel. Documentation can also be found on our website at netlytic.org.